Hello everyone, welcome to game number two of the evening. I'm John Bill Bang Zudima, and I have a new co-caster with me. So uh, this is Ash and Ash Nutter. How are you doing today, Ash? I'm doing pretty good. I'm excited for this game. I think uh, as of right now, it could be anyone's game. You know, it's uh, pretty evenly matched as far as I know. Yeah, so both these teams, uh, obviously St. Clair, not doing too well in their last one, fell pretty hard there in game number one of the preseason. Um, uh, it was a pretty one-sided affair from, you know, almost from the get-go from like the first four or five minutes, uh, after that scuffle and bot. So what do you think St. Clair changes going here in, uh, in the game number two of the evening? Um, honestly, I think they're going to have to play a lot more, uh, carefully or not, not carefully, but I think they're going to think they have to because they, they got murked pretty hard in that last game. And after a game like that, it's kind of hard to not feel like you have to be careful because, uh, you know, they, they that, that, that was a little weird yeah. how bad that was. <laughs> yeah, it was it was definitely not. And obviously we are in preseason, like you're saying. The games aren't going to matter as, as much going yeah. into this regular season. You do kind of want to try stuff out um, and see what happens going into, you know, try different champions out, try different uh, combos out, try different team comps out, um, and see what pops up. Obviously, um, like we said, they didn't exactly follow the game plan. They might have uh, thought about going into that game so something to think about maybe they want to try and lay back a bit play a lot more controlled because uh, as much as it doesn't matter you do kind of want to get as much practice in as you can and if the game's only going to go to 20 minutes or so you're not really getting in a lot of valuable practice time yeah and especially like you said these games aren't like max priority right now so during this uh new patch especially that mm -hmm. just came out yeah. you gotta you gotta try new things you gotta see what works you gotta you got to experiment a little bit. You can't just keep going with the same stuff because it might not work as well now. Yeah, for sure. And we saw Ricky, I think, last game did really, really well for himself. He was 6-6. Six and six. Uh, A lot of people struggled in that game, especially the mid-jungle. So it looks like we are going to be getting into picks and bans here. First, bans are going out really quick here. St. Clair banning Echo and Gwen. The Aatrox ban from GBU. And we did talk about there was three top bans that came from Bay State in that last series. And, and you know, Ricky still popped off, so definitely something to think about coming into this next game. There we go. Got our uh, second ban for GVU. That's, I believe, Zyra. Syndra. Syndra. Syndra, yeah. So Syndra's that second ban. We got Zed as well, and we got Graves actually is going to be the third ban for GVU. So a lot of power picks in those bans from GVU, but a lot of, I feel like, obviously, Echo and Gwen, both very prominent champions right now. Kiana is actually going to be the first pick for St. Clair. She did get buffed in this patch, so she is going to be a lot more potent here on patch 11-18. So definitely a power pick, and it is going to be going to that mid lane. So uh, like we said in that last game, definitely struggle a little bit. They are going to have a new mid laner here. Their sub is going to be playing for them in this game. So obviously a little bit of a change there. How do you think that's going to affect the jungle mid dynamic? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. Honestly, um... I don't know how to answer that, that, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, for the jungle mid, obviously last game they did struggle quite a bit on St. Clair's side. So you're going to have to think a lot about, you know, do you want to go for that uh, early game agency? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, so like you said, it's going to be a different mid laner. So the jungle mid dynamic is definitely going to be different here in game number two. Um, Zai is going to be picked from GBU. So we are going to see possibly a Rakan answer. For St. Clair, yeah. So they want yeah. to take that duo away from the bot lane. Um, Zaya and Rakan actually um, have slight buffs to each other when they're on the same team. So you kind of want to take that away from the other team, giving them not a possibility. And the Trundle pick for GBU is big. He can be flexed between support and uh, top lane and jungle. So he did get in this patch a small, I guess it was a change. So his pillar which is really good for support, was taken away, and they buffed a little bit of his uh, durability. So he is probably going towards the mid top, or sorry, the jungle top lane. And the last two picks are going to be Aphelios and Nautilus. I think that Nautilus pick is going to be very good for the uh, the reach out. He's going to be able to start a lot of fights there. Yeah, good hook ability here. Jax is going to be banned away from Ricky yet again. So we do see, like in the last game, he got the Aatrox ban and the Jax ban going his way. So definitely, teams are already watching out for this guy uh, even early into this preseason. Yeah, he, he's definitely making sure to get Jax out of that game. Seems in these last two games, he's trying his absolute best to make sure he's not going up against that champion. Yeah, for sure. So it looks like Yon will be banned away for St. Clair. And we have two bans left. It does seem like there's a lot of 
I don't call them solo queue champions, but a lot of very uh, assassin heavy bands. Echo, Zed, and Dion all banned away from St. Clair on GVU there. Gaswo is going to be the final ban for GVU, and the Irelia is going to be the answer. Uh, Irelia, super, super good pick right now on both top and mid, so uh, a lot of priority on that ban. And looks like Nar is going to be the fourth pick here for GVU, which means Trunda will be going into that jungle roll so all that's left is the mid laners here or the mid laner for gvu and the top and mid lane for scc i'm assuming that nar is going to be the same player as the last game oh so... it's his new team gvu oh new team yeah so they're playing yes yeah, so they're playing grand video so it's going to be a new player zoe is going to be the mid pick for st Clair here so um I don't know if I like the Zoe pick. Obviously, it is very strong. It did get a buff on her Sleepy Trouble Bubble, so she is slightly stronger. But I feel like with the Nautilus hook, with the Trundle, and with the Nara Rundown, it is going to be really hard for this Zoe to try and survive uh, all of this engage potential from GVU. Uh, looks like last pick will be up in just a moment here for St. Clair. They are going to pick the Scion in the Scion. top lane. So That's... it does... Yeah, they needed the tankiness. They needed that... Uh, rock on the top against that nar i think nar is going to win that matchup pretty easily but Sion obviously always going to stay relevant always going to oh, be yeah. super tanky he, he's a he's more of a safer pick honestly mm -hmm. but still like you said going up against nar that's uh it's a tough matchup yeah because sure. nar is going to poke him up pretty well early but again he is just kind of picking up his stats picking up more health and he's going to become a tank and he's going to a lot more effective late game we have an ari pick actually so definitely something we've seen rising in priority a lot more hasn't been seen in quite a few years but this last year it's made quite uh, a big appearance in uh both lec and lcs so a lot of pro players picking up uh, ari so that is going to be going into the mid lane into this zoe so definitely going to be an interesting matchup zoe uh can struggle quite a bit going up against ari because of that charm if she tries to dash forward with her r ari can land a stun or uh, and land a charm and uh, almost full kill you and there's not much you can do about it. So the Zoe is going to be really effective with that long-range poke because it seems like GVU definitely lacks a lot of uh, long-range um, options here with that RE. Yeah, so that is going to be our, our final draft here. So last pick was going to be RE. What do you think? Uh, obviously, you can't see the draft right now, but uh, I do think St. Clair plays this differently than they did the last game. Honestly, um... I think, honestly, they might try for that, that level one like the other team did last time. Because, uh, well, like they tried last time. It didn't work uh, as much as they thought it would in the last game. But uh, they seemed really adamant on that choice. Like they were going to go in for it in the last second, they just backed out. So I'd, I'd like to see if that would work out this time. But you never know. Yeah, so it looks like their picks and are going to come through here. And the Trundle in the jungle, obviously, like I said, it did get buffed. So it is going to be more effective. Oh, and it looks like Kiana's actually going to be going into the jungle here. I did forget about that pick. So uh, Kiana jungle into the Trundle. I, I think Kiana's really going to struggle here. Obviously, she did get a, a jungle buff slightly in the last patch. So she's okay. She was a really big jungle pick actually two years ago. Um, a lot of people were playing her in the jungle, but she got heavily nerfed. So definitely E-Hug going for an aggressive jungle pick here. Uh, we were talking about actually after he is a very, very good Kindred player. Um, and he plays it a lot. So it is interesting to see, you know, didn't get banned, but he didn't end up picking it, trying to go for something new. Um, do you think it's more about comfort or do you think maybe he is, uh, you know, not feeling as, as good about his Kindred after that first game? Honestly, after that first game, I would not be feeling too good about playing that champion. But uh, it it could be, it could be just for the comfort. Honestly, I I'm I'm kind of going more towards that. Yeah, I think so first too. game though. Yeah, I think the first game just kind of shook him up. Obviously, um, it's a champion play all the time, and there are games where you're gonna have a really rough time. But it just seemed like. Uh, a lot of facets of the game he was kind of surprised he's getting caught out quite a bit by this jervin playing really really aggressive when he probably should have just been farming and focusing on that so definitely seeing the kiana jungle here interesting pick uh we'll see what it has uh, a lot of potential it doesn't really win very well into the trundle but its ganks are going to be very very potent so nar advantage in the top lane uh, i think overall again we're seeing an aphelios in the bot lane the pick is good but like we saw in the last game it's very susceptible to uh, a lot of this early game 
madness that the side of GVU is going to have. So Felix is going to be very careful. Barlow, I think he did really well in that Varus last game. Actually, he did get uh, picked off quite a bit in mid, but in that 2v2 lane, him and Fresh in the bot lane looked really good. So do you think they try and focus more on that bot lane or maybe, you know, think about trying to repair that uh, mid jungle problem that last game had? Honestly, um, I think they should probably focus on mid jungle. Uh, if they can get a, a decent mid jungle going in, at the beginning, I think they could, uh, if even if bot lane is, is not doing well, they could come in and, and help pretty well. Uh, bot lane seemed to hold off pretty well last game for for a while there so i think they're they they're probably going to be fine it's jungle and in mid that i'm a little worried about for this game yeah for sure so like we said we are going to have a uh, a different mid laner for st Clair. so it is going to be interesting to see how that one works out for for these guys and um you know top lane ricky did really well last game he's going to be on the scion so it is going to be into an r again but he's not going to have the same agency that he did last game. I think he was was that top lane matchup. He was winning in that one. He was doing pretty well. This one, he kind of just has to absorb the pressure and just sit up there and farm. Um, but you do have the Aphelios to play for. Last game, you had the Karma and Varus in the bot lane, which is pretty good early to mid game, but then falls off at the end. Aphelios, pretty much the opposite. It not, doesn't do too well early to mid, but then once you get like towards the mid late game, that's an Aphelios comes online and can just, you know, wipe a team, uh, as we've seen many times, it can just totally wipe out a team by himself. So uh, different style that we're playing this time. And I think, um, like I said earlier, it is going to be a little bit of an easier team comp to play around. Obviously, you just kind of wait for the Scion to get tanky, wait for Aphelios to get a few items, um, and just try and play as much around that uh, jungle as you can, because the Kiana is going to have very good gank. So you kind of just got to wait for her to come in your lane to try something. But uh, what do you think the gvu tries to do in this game um honestly i think I, i've never seen their their type of gameplay before but they they might go for a little bit of an aggressive start to stop that scion from getting too too tanky yeah um and i i think that would that would probably create an easy rest of the game for them if they were to just you know focus on on where they're gonna have troubles later in the game yeah so and yeah. I, I think Scion too, uh, with the Trundle Alt that takes all of his stats or takes a lot of his stats, it's going to help him out a lot, especially in those ganks. If Nar gets ahead, it's going to be a really rough game for this top half because as a Kiana, it's going to be really tough unless he's in mini form to burst him out. And he has a lot of escape options. So it's going to be, I, I think it's going to be really tough for that to happen. Uh, bot lane, the Zaya Nautilus lane, I think is really good, especially if you can, you know, if you land a big hook early, onto this Aphelios, he's going to have a really rough time trying to get out. If you burn his flash early, I think Trundle is a lot easier of a gank to, to try and handle. And um, if you pick up that R on Nautilus, it's kind of just a free kill on Aphelios if he doesn't have flash. So it, I think it's really going to have to Barlow to have really good positioning, make sure he checks uh, everything if they try and push up in this lane. And I don't think it's going to be as much of a free uh, push as last game. Obviously, we saw a set and the Varus Karma last game just kind of pushing up in their lanes, forcing stuff. Um, because Jarvan was all over the mid lane. So they kind of got themselves a little bit of lane advantage. Obviously, it didn't work out because that Oriana Jarvan was so far ahead. But um, this game, do you think we see some more of that forward play from these guys? Or do you think, you know, obviously last game, um, totally different. Didn't They had way more agency in the last game. Not going to have quite the advantage that they will in this game. So do you think they play it differently? Or do you think they keep going aggressive because they feel confident? This is for St. Clair? Yeah, for St. Clair. I think... Um... I, I think they're going to play a lot uh, more calmly, if if that's mm. the word. I, I think they're going to be careful. Controlled, controlled, controlled. Yeah, right. they 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 went for the aggressive play last time. It did not work out. Uh, they kind of just gave up halfway through mm. on the play, and it was it was a little weird because uh, they they definitely could have gotten a decent start there. Yeah, for sure. So we are going to be loading into the rift here in just a second. Game number two of the day, SCC versus GVU. Here we go, game number two, looking for St. Clair to try and redeem themselves after a pretty rough game one. So looks like both teams going to be, it looks like St. Clair, again, we are going to have Z uh, Zeph Zephyrot, Zephyrot, not quite sure, sorry. Uh, Zephyr Zephyrot, I'm going to go Zephyrot. Zephyrot, that's what it is. Okay, boom, got it. So Zephyrot in the mid lane here, and it uh, looks like the game is... Oh, there we go. So we got Zephyrot in the mid lane now for St. Clair. Uh, he is going to be a game changer here. He does bring the Ignite, 
um, while Ari and Nar both have the TP. So he is looking to try and get that early pick, especially with the Kiana. A lot of pick potential between those two characters. So looks like they are going to rush to this bot lane tribush, and they are going to stick around here for a bit. Just a standard spread from Grandview covering all the ins and outs. So a lot of times you'll see um, these guys at the starts of games, they'll either go towards this mid here where they're pinging, or they'll go spread out like they do so they're covering all the entrances of uh, anywhere that the invade could come from. So looks like GVU took the standard route where they're all just kind of holding the entrances, making sure they can't come in anywhere. They are and, being careful, making yeah. sure there's not an early evade, which is understandable because the whole team did crowd up at the very beginning. They could have taken that as they're going to invade right into their jungle, but mm -hmm. seems not yeah, so. They decided they didn't want to. Looks like actually it's going to be a late invade from GVU here. They are not, they're going to be spotted out on the ward though, so they will be seen. And both teams will know that this is being taken by Trundle. So early invade here on the red buff by the guys from GVU. Trundle will take this one early and looks like he'll probably just continue to clear that bot side. Scion going to get an early fight here with Nar does land the Q Nar trades back with a Q of his own so pretty even trade there but grass proc and electric you going to go down onto the Zoe as well so a lot of poke damage from GVU early give themselves a little bit of an advantage here and it looks like I think that oh it looks like another Q a lot of fighting here it looks like good not or good hook there by Nasus but the yeah, shot gonna save him a lot of damage lots of trading going on here and a surprising amount of trading going on in the top lane as well So, so far, this does seem pretty even in bot lane for the trading. They're taking about the same amount of health. Yeah, it looks like top lane Sion is kind of getting uh, poked out here as we expected. He will be absorbing a lot of damage by yeah, this Yeah, he's, he's taking a lot more than he Oh, it looks like they're going to hit level 2. Kong going to go in here. He's going to get ignited here. Looks like the E from the Desire is going to be good. Crash going to go down first blood here. Vilio's looking for something here, but he doesn't really have that much damage to start out this game. A lot of life still here. Eat him alive here for the second. Root coming up. Oh, gonna take a tower shot, actually, but does stay alive. So, first blood going over to GVU. Good attempt there by the Rakan, but he did end up getting caught up in that Nautilus hook. And looks like Dive gonna come down here on Vilio's. He's not gonna have very long to live. He's gonna die on a turret here. Shot's gonna go down onto Trundle, but it's not gonna be enough. He is gonna live, and Dive is successful for GVU and 2-0 for the side of Grandview to start off this game. Yana going to come in for mid lane, though. She's going to go for the gank. Good flash by Ari to keep herself alive. And that's going to be a clean 2-0 to start off this game from GVU. It seems like they're uh, pretty decent in mid lane right now. It doesn't really look like anyone's taking that much of a, a head start in mid lane, uh, unlike Ooh. bot lane. That was a close charm. Trundle gonna walk through mid here. Looks like Zoe is gonna go for the bubble here, but they don't realize Nara is coming down. Flash instantly from Kiana to get herself out of there. Zoe's gonna flash as well. That's gonna be two flashes down. Nara gonna E over. He is gonna just take a tower shot and leave, but Flash is burned on both jungler and the mid lane for St. Clair. It's not good for how they want to start this game. Not too much have been accomplished oh, there, but they're going join. back in. He's gonna pop right back out of there. He, uh, he Tresh did not want any of that smoke. So they do seem to be uh, heavily staying in mid lane here. Seems like they, they want to make sure that uh, they get ahead there. But both junglers are staying oh, mid lane. Oh no, big E from Zaya. She's going to feel like it's going to stay alive for the moment. But Barlow bitten off a little bit more than he can chew here in the bot lane. He might have to back. Nope, he's going to use his heal and stay for a little bit longer. Yeah, so it's definitely... Uh... Zaya picked up level 3 halfway through that wave and just played uh, that flawlessly, landed a really good E, a lot of damage onto this Aphelios, and things not looking too good to start off this game here for uh, St. Clair in the bot lane. I will say starting off with 0-2 is, is not very good. They might be a little bit demor demoralized with that. Yeah, and I think, like you we were saying earlier, they played really well in that last game, like Barlow and Fresh. But I think the reason they played so well and they are playing so aggressively is because the, the Varus Karma has a lot more uh, ability to take advantage early compared to this uh, Rakan Aphelios. This is definitely more played for the late game. Um, and Kiana already flashless. Looks like she will come for the lane gank here. Gonna walk through this bush. Will get the root down on. Oh, look like Quick Flash by Nar is gonna stay alive. He won't get the Mega Nar here. Oh, he's going to stay alive for the moment, but Nautilus is going to go aggressive here. Recon full HP, Ophelios not so much. Flash going to go down here. They are going to get that E down onto Barlow. He's going to go die, and Zaya is going to pick up that couple more autos here. He's not going to have that Q available, so she can't quite kill him. 
but uh, another kill on the bot lane there, and uh, Barlow just kind of getting bullied here at the start of this game. Nar has Nard out, and he's trying to go for a more aggressive approach now, getting Scion away from his tower. Oh, he's going to go for that back now. Look, he, he is going to miss a little bit of uh, CS for that, probably, and let Scion get a couple hits on, on his tower, but oh no, he's decided to stay. Yeah, so bot lane advantage did give a free dragon over to GBU, so Cloud Drake early here for them. A little bit of extra ultimate cooldowns here when they hit level 6. Nothing too significant, though. And uh, more surprising to me that Cyan is up by about 10 farm right now. Obviously, Nar is going to catch a lot of that in the tower, but uh, Cyan taking advantage in this mid lane is actually very surprising because I thought he was losing that lane pretty hard early. Looks like mid lane Zoe is going to be walking up towards this Kiana, but now Nautilus is there too. This is looking kind of dangerous. Nautilus might be coming in here. He's going to get caught up by that hook. Dredge line going to go down onto this Scion. Scion is going to survive just for the moment. He's actually staying alive here. Nara looking like he wants Nara out here in just a second. Scion staying. He's not level 6 yet, though. This is dangerous. Trundle's coming up as well. He does pick up that level 6. Nara is going to have ult as well, and he's going to go down here in just a oh, big shield W from Ricky to keep himself alive. Good play. He's going to wow. get out of there. He will have to back, but at least that's not another kill for the Grandview University. That is Ricky dancing with death in the top line. No mana, no HP, says it's okay. I wanted to get another minion before I left, so he stays alive here for the moment. TP going to go down here actually onto this board. He doesn't have Kiana as backup. That yeah, it does not have, have all. Oh, move. big dodge on the dredge line there, though. He's going to stay alive. He does pick up the, a lot of CC here from the Scion. He's staying alive still. Zoe finally going to join, does miss Sleepy Trouble, but Kiana looking for that Q, does manage to get Eric Z Yang in the jungle there. Trundle punished for his aggressiveness, and blue buff picked up by Kiana, doesn't have ult yet, so she can't quite stop this Nautilus. Oh, good hook I on sort of feel ball. like that was Zoe. a bit of a Oh, it looks like TV. a lot. Mari is going to be in the bot lane, though. Barlow is going to go down here in a moment. Rakan going to try and run away here, does manage to hit that W onto the Nar. Keeps up alive for the moment, but it's not going to be enough. Ooh, big flash is going to have to be used there. But Barlow, again, playing too aggressive. And just, uh, you know, a good catch in the jungle onto that trundle is just neutralized by it being too aggressive here in the bot lane. Yeah, I do I do feel like that Mundo did kind of rage TP into that fight. Or which, Scion. Or Scion, yeah, my bad. Uh, he did kind of rage TP into that fight, which it didn't pay off too much for him, but they did get a kill in the end of it. Yeah, I think it was it was a good TP. He did pick up that Bramble Vest, so he was able to stay alive for a lot longer than expected in that top lane fight, and they did end up getting a kill for it. But, uh, you know, Zoe, ra uh, Zoe roamed towards the fight. Ari decided, okay, you know what? Uh, I can go bot lane, I can pick up Me Meslo decided that uh, he wanted to go bot lane. Not enough respect shown by Barlow and Fresh, and it results in Barlow going down, and that advantage it picked up in the jungle is just, you know, taken away. It's 300 gold for 300 gold, so, um, you know, well played by St. Clair. It is definitely encouraging to pick up a kill there, yeah. at least they're getting something back, but Barlow definitely playing too aggressive here. Oh, and... it is a game pause. Yeah, so it looks like we may have some, uh, ping issues by the jungler from Grandview so we're gonna have a momentary pause here but let's let's take a step back then let's take a look at this game 4-1 the scoreline right now Grandview up by about 1500 gold obviously this early in the game it's pretty significant but uh, I mean a lot of that gold obviously is pretty spread out uh, a kill for you know just about everyone in GVU except for NAR um, and three deaths for that Aphelios in the bot lane and, and like I said before Barlow was allowed to kind of play aggressive in the last game. This game, the Philios is not as forgiving as the Karma Virus is, so he's definitely getting punished for that. What do you think um, St. Clair does to try and, you know, stifle this this early game push from GVU? Um, I do got to say, I think they should focus on um, the the more fed people, which everyone's kind of the, the same... Uh, um, I shouldn't say fed yeah, on the other so team. Everyone balanced, has so. pretty much one kill except for the NAR on Grandview. So if I were them, I, I'd focus a little bit on that Trundle. He he could be a little bit of a problem, maybe mm. NAR, but NAR does not have a kill yet. Yeah, I think what you do have to think about is trying to funnel this Kiana because Kiana is pretty good in this early game. And when she gets free, she just picked up her ult um, level six. So she is definitely going to have a lot more agency here in the game. But... At the 1-0, she's doing pretty good. Obviously, Ethug's feeling a lot better than he was this game than he was last game. I think he was like 1-4 at this point or something. Yeah. Last game, so he's feeling a lot better in this one. Oh, looks we're like. back there in. we go. So 
Like I said, Ethug being ahead here does have the only kill for the side of uh, St. Clair here. So what you really need to do is just have uh, Aphelios and Rakan just try and, you know, play very conservatively. Try, you know, not die in that bot lane. Try and keep themselves alive uh, for as long as possible. Because at this point, you're 0-3. You kind of realize, like, obviously they're playing too aggressive. You need to try and back off, play safe. Uh, having a Rakan for the peel is nice, but the Nautilus engage is really hard to control. So... Definitely going to be something to think about going into the rest of this game. So it looks like bot lane here is just going to be kind of stagnant. Uh, level 6 on Barlow, level 5 on Rakan, so it doesn't quite have that ultimate available to him yet. Big wave crashing here in the top lane. Uh, Scion and Narv going pretty even. Oh, big sleep by Zoe, actually. He is going to not going to go for the Q, actually. He's just going to go for the sleep. Make Ari a little scared and uh, not really do too much about it. Trundle just farming the jungle along with Kiana. Just going for that bot clear. Kiana going to back. Uh, I'm assuming she has probably enough gold here to back for a full item or at least close to it. Oh, so it this could like... be a play by Zoe. Oh, no. Zoe's taking a lot oh, of damage. Bigbird. This is pretty even right now. Yeah, so it looks like they're just going to poke each other out. Not really going to do too much. Uh, jungle was not on the map. Not visible on any wards. So... Ari not going to go for that kill. Uh, she does have her ult available, but was not sure where the jungler was, so did have to play pretty safe. I will say, it seems like after everything that's happened so far in this game, Nar and uh, Sion are still going pretty even. Oh, oh well, actually now... This might not be good. Yeah, oh. Sion might be in a bad spot here. Nar's going in for that kill. He's pretty close. Oh, oh Kiana's coming in for the help. Oh, that's, oh, that's a revive. Yeah, no, poor Nar there. Yeah, so you actually got a trade there. It was really big for the Nar to end up getting that kill because if it was just a clean one for two, definitely would have an advantage them. But a lot of plates being taken down boss. So Trundle going to be answering that top gank with a gank and bot of his own. And Aphelios and Rakan being Ooh, so that's far a behind. Big play. Yeah, so they did end up getting that first turret. Rakan being. Er, Felix being so far behind does mean that they had to back off, give respect to that trundle. And it also means there's a free dragon for GBU to take here. So it does seem like that drag is going to be uncontested. So second drake is going to go over to GBU here. Looks like it will be a uh, infernal or a... Yeah, so it will be infernal soul. So two drags away for the GVU members there. And obviously, like we said, Kiana being 2-0 is definitely helping them out. But it's so hard now because you took that bot turret really early and Nara gets to swap out of that lane. And you still have, you know, two and a half minutes to try and take some plates for this uh, Zaya Nautilus. And they're so far ahead at this point. Looks like actually they're not going to contest this. I'm surprised. I thought they would contest this Rift Herald, but it looks like... Oh, they're thinking about it. Zion Nautilus here in mid, but I think they're just going to give it up. Just accept the fact that it's not there. There's a lot of poke by Zoe, but she misses the Q. That's not what you want to see from your mid laner. Good smite. And it looks like St. Clair is going to be able to take that Rift Herald uncontested. Will they be able to get out? Yes. So, a good objective by them. They were able to pick up the... Oh, Ignite going to go down here. Heal from Zion. Is she going to die though? Yes! Oh. Zephyroth picking up a massive kill. Onto that Zaya big pick and uh, hope for St. Clair in this game number two. Now, Aerie did come up top lane and switch with Nar, so yeah. maybe she might have a little bit more luck against the Scion. Yeah, looks like Scion can land a nice game, though. Oh, big sleep oh. from the Zoe. A big, nice, and nice Just shot. Just got instantly deleted there. Yeah, so all the advantage that they had in this top lane is now gone. Really good sleep by Zoe in the mid lane. Trundle oh, this is dangerous. Trundus, Trundle, you do not want to be here. This is not where you want to be, dude. No, that was Big a bad play by, by him. He's going to stay alive for the moment. Picked up all the stats from the Scion, so was pretty tanky. It will stay alive. Nautilus going to come up here to help him out. But uh, a couple of big sleepy trouble bubbles by Zoe does get a kill on Zaya and a kill on the Ari. So definitely St. Clair looking like they have a lot of life left in them. And the game is looking pretty, not quite even, still down by 2k, but looking a lot better than it was five minutes ago. Definitely. So it seems like Zaya is getting some easy plates in mid. No one's really coming after her. Actually, no, it seems like... Oh, who's that? Aphelios coming up to mid? Yeah, Aphelios looks like... Oh, oh, big flash. Flash can be traded out. Rakan looking for the ult, but not going to find anything there. So flash is traded from the support... Or from the ADC, sorry, and the top laner. Big Zoe and Kiana bubble. Oh, does land it. 
And those Sleepy Troubles are going to start really hurting here in a few minutes. Zoe going to pick up the Ludens sometime soon. And when she does that, that is that is really going to hurt. So, well played by St. Clair. Using that Zoe a lot more effectively now. Kiana going to throw down Rift Herald in mid lane here. So, it looks like they will get these plates. So, a little bit of extra gold in the pockets of the St. Clair members. So, uh, gold, still about 2k deficit, but... Uh, Looks like a lot of it's going to be pretty spread out between GBU and a lot of it's going to be on this Keon and Zoe in the mid lane for St. Clair. Seems like they're going heavily into that ARAM play down mid, but now they're starting to uh, spread off, maybe break down towards bot lane, that NAR anyway. Yeah, so our, our looks like Zaya and Nautilus are going to be backing in the mid lane. Ari respecting is Zoe in the top lane, uh, not allowing her. Although she does have better items right now than Zoe. Oh, big charm from the Ari is going to get a pick. On a Zephyrod here. Alt gonna go down once. Looking for that second one. Misses the Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Has to flash out. Oh, the Q is just barely gonna land on a Zephyrod there. And Ari gonna pick up a kill on her own terms. It's like Aphelios. He's gonna be alive here. You can just stay under turret. We're gonna go down, but that is a massive kill from Meslo in the mid lane there onto Zephyrod. Zephyrod was doing pretty well, but uh, just played that really well. Played it extensively and uh, didn't allow that Sleepy Trouble Bubble to hit her, which was what's really made the difference there. Both mid laners flashing, but Meslo. Seems like uh, Grandview is really trying to push for that A ram play down the mid, get those towers out of the way, and uh, it seems like uh, St. Clair is just now trying to come up and stop it, but they were not really paying attention to mid lane for a while. Yeah, they had to give that up. They had to, they're, they're far enough behind in their bot lane that they have to kind of give up objectives, at least for the moment. Because uh, at this point, if you try and fight them, you're not going to win those fights. Because the no. you can see the Aphelios still not have on an item. Uh, the Zaya is you know at an item and boots and two long swords, so significantly farther ahead. But looks like they are going to try and answer. The Zoe is going to do a lot of damage right now. Scion, she's kind of absorbing what this Nara has to throw at him for the moment, so he'll be okay. Once Nara picks up his uh, uh, sorry, I forget the name of the item that he takes. All the time. I can't remember the name of it. Anyway. Once Nar picks up his full item, he'll uh, be a lot more potent to the Scion. But Scion, right now, he's going to have the advantage. Going for the R. Big flash oh, by Nar. Yeah. Looks like Trey's going to go R across the map. Big R by Nar. Going to keep himself alive for the moment, but no. It's not going to be enough. Trade is going to go down onto the mid laner, though. Good ults by Nautilus. And uh, Trade's going out across the map, but it does mean that it'll cost St. Clair a mid lane turret there. They did uh, prevent Nar from getting his item for a little bit longer there. But you are correct. They did lose a tower. Uh, they're all going to go contest for this drag oh, right now. This Let's could see be a big it. steal from the jungler. Can Trunnel flash over the spawn? Get it? He does. He gets the steal. Oh, Trunnel picks up the steal on that drag and looks like the fight after is going to be a messy one. Charm onto this Kiana Mishi. He's going to go down here with the moment. Nestle. We're going to have to kill on that one. They're going to try and run out of this. Can they run fast enough? GVU says no. We got you in our sights. We're going to run you down. Trunnel picking up a kill onto Barlow. And it's just going to be Scion, the only one left here. Ricky going to go down here in just a second. Trunnel he picking up two for himself. And Nara going to get that last kill onto the Scion. So, after all that, GVU picks up the Dragon, picks up four kills. And uh, I guess five if you count the early pick onto the Zoe and the mid lane turret. That just went all sideways for St. Clair so quickly. For a second there, I almost said Scion pulled a revive. Then I remembered that yeah, that's his passive. Just passive. But yeah, so it looks like GBU extend their gold lead from about 2k to about 6k. Pick up a mid lane turret. Pick up the third dragon on soul point now at just 17 minutes. Things are not looking too good for St. Clair here in game number two. Trundle is going in to take that tower, it seems like. No, he's just pretty aggressive, a actually. Hits. Zion does TP to this, but he doesn't realize that Zaya is also here. Looks like Nala's going to pick up the backside as well. Good root there by Etha. Going to pick up here there. Trundle is going to get knocked up here. He's going to be in four members of St. Clair. Good root there by Aphelios, but he's going to stay alive. But Kiana finally ate that shutdown, but big damage by Zaya onto Rakan. Rakan stays alive. Huge heals. Meanwhile, Zoe picks up a kill in the mid lane onto this Ari. Zion going to go for this tower dive on Nautilus. Gets a knock up. Gets a double knock up. But meanwhile, oh, big E by Zion. Going to keep himself alive. Double kill. It looks like they're going to be looking for more Zion. Going for this kill on the turret. He's going to go for the plate damage actually on turret. Oh, Aphelios can land that root. Nari is going to be up here in the top lane looking for this kill onto this onto the uh, Kiana is going to get that lost auto. Oh, she's going to survive for the moment. Big root. Keeps himself alive. He is going to gnar out, though. Zoe going to try and help him out. Nautilus going to get the hook onto this. Aphelios is going to go down here in just a second. Zaya going to pick up another kill in the top lane. And it looks like everyone else is going to survive. But just fighting happening all over the map. But St. Clair just seem, doesn't seem to get an advantage in any of these fights. 
St. Clair does uh, seem to be falling behind these past two games. Uh, we don't know what's going on, but uh, maybe they're just not feeling it today. Maybe they're uh, it's just an off day for them. Yeah, for sure. I think a lot of these mid-game fights, the Zoe is pretty decently far ahead, but that Zai is just ruining them. She's at two items, two and a half items already, so, and Aphelios just picked up his first one. They are so far ahead. Um, I mean, it's it's good effort for trying. There was four of them. They did try for that top uh, that top shove, but a really good route by Arian in the bot lane there meant that that dive was just uh, worthless. I, I mean, it's just so hard to try and play against Zaya when she's this far ahead. So Sion is trying to get a little bit more CS down in bot lane, but it seems like something might be happening in mid lane oh, up there. Oh, looks like Ari going to get a lot of damage on the Sion. Sion, going to answer back Ricky, giving her a little bit of a axe, but that's not going to really do much. Looks like Nar has finished his Divine Sunder. That is the name of that item that I now remember. And uh, it does mean that splitting against him is going to be really tough for the Sion. So they're going to have to try and group up. Obviously, Kiana is still doing pretty well for herself. 3-1-1 one, one there. Sion with a big ult towards the mid lane here. Going to see if he can pick anything up. Oh, no. He's going to stop, actually. Halfway through. Aphelios going for the ult. Completely whips right through the goalpost. Big knockup by three members of... The old big stopwatch to keep Nautilus alive. Looks like Zaya going for those auto. She's in the middle of four people. She gets shut down by the Sion. But it doesn't matter because they are running over this fight anyway. It is a four for one. They finally take down that Zaya. But what did it cost? The entire St. Clair team. Yeah, that was a little bit of a risky play. And it didn't really pay off for them. Uh, it seems the only person alive is the... I forget that. The Rakan. 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 Yeah, Rakan. Rakan is the only one left here. And it looks like they're just going to try and run it down mid lane. Rakan fresh going to do what he can, but he gets charmed anyway. He's going to go down to the Trundle, and that is a full five man death from St. Clair. An ace from GVU, and uh, this game's looking pretty, pretty well out of hand so far. I don't claim for a second to be better than any of those guys, but Rakan, I don't know if that play was. Uh, such a good I, I play. Think, I think it was fine if he managed to evade that charm, but because he didn't evade the charm, he couldn't really delay them and stop them from getting the inhibitor, which was which is what you really wanted to do, right? Because if yeah. you land a good ult, a good knock up there, at least you can delay for a second and get your team up, but unfortunately, uh, you just couldn't really do that, and Meslo with a really good charm does mean that that delay does not happen. So, uh, 629 on the Zaya. 526 on this Trundle. Nautilus at 2-0-12 is doing really well for himself here. Soul point coming up here in uh, in just a few seconds. So, oh, good initiation there. Good knock up onto the two members of the bot lane there. But they are going to stay alive here for the moment. TP from Ari isn't coming back line here. Charmed up. Kiana's going to go down. Looks like Kron going to go down as well. I feel going to be the only one left here in the back line. He's going to go down here in just a second. Zaya with a big ult to keep herself alive here. And looks like um, the Trundle whole team. is going to go down too. And that's going to be just about it. The GGs come yeah. through, and that is all she wrote. GVU take this in formidable, pa formidable fashion in 22 minutes. That is going to be it. Shelly will be knocking down these turrets here in just a moment. But uh, GVU, much better mid-game. We're able to take advantage of that early bot lane pressure. And Shelly will be knocking down that next in just a second. We get to see her dance in just a second here. She is going to be dancing out. And that is going to be it for game number two. GVU take it in uh, dominant fashion. Yeah, GVU was definitely impressive there. They uh, they pulled ahead with a high kill game, 24-8. to eight. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Uh, like I said earlier, this has to be an off day for St. Clair. They're just not doing well today. Yeah, I think more than anything that game, it was, again, St. Clair kind of getting into this mindset of, you know, the early game was – I mean – Last game, the early game wasn't so even. But this time, you know, Kiana picked up a couple kills. Zoe picked up a couple of good picks. And it was pretty even. But then they started losing fight after fight after fight after fight. And it just seemed like it was kind of the snowball effect of, like, because we lost this fight, we're going to lose this tower. So we have to go fight for this tower. But then you, you lose the tower, you lose the fight, and then you lose the dragon after. So it seemed like uh, they just kind of needed to say, okay, we need to calm down. We need to just stop fighting. Give them a couple objectives. And I think the the real turning point that game, obviously the mid-fight where they went 4 for 1 was pretty bad. But they went back, they went to Dragon, and then Trundle Flash stole that Dragon. And after that, it was just chaos. And it just seemed like everything happened, you know, death after death after death. And uh, yeah, definitely shout out yeah. GBU, though. Played an excellent game. It was definitely one of those games where no matter what you did after a certain point, there was always going to be a consequence to your action. 
there was no way after probably about mid game that anything they could do would have only a positive effect for the rest of the game. Mm, yeah, it just seems like uh, St. Clair, again, uh, I think they definitely had a lot better jungle mid. I think this game, uh, Barlow was getting really aggressive in that bot lane, wasn't really playing you know, with enough awareness. And it seemed like a lot of times, uh, every time there was something that happened positive for St. Clair, there was an answer on the other side of the map. It seemed like, uh, you know, a lot of times there was a pick in mid and then um, ADC and support would die in the bot lane. A pick in top and then trying to will come gank bot lane, they were getting dove. And it just seemed like every time St. Clair made a good play, there was a good answer from GBU. So uh, definitely something to think about going into these next couple games. Obviously, both these games uh, preseason, so not something that you have to worry about for your stat line going into the regular season. But a lot of stuff that St. Clair can look back on and say, okay, this is how we need to play early game. Um, this is how we need to, you know, kind of flesh out those little things and say, okay, um, we need to kind of calm down and just say, okay, this isn't solo queue. This is organized League of Legends. And if you try and, you know, go for stuff when your team doesn't have an advantage or when you're not properly set up with vision, you're really going to have a tough time making plays. And I will definitely say I was very happy to see that everyone on St. Clair uh, was a good sport about the game at the end, all saying GG, uh, even though they lost. You know, it's always nice to have a positive outlook on the end and, mm -hmm. you know, a look back and, like you said, see see what you can fix. Yeah, see sure. See what you did wrong what could be done better. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think really it comes down to playing around your vision. I think um, bot lane definitely was not having a great game there. There was a lot of times where um, there was something good that would happen in the jungle or we saw there's good jungle pick, good top pick. Um, and then bot lane, they'd be playing too aggressive. There'd be an answer immediately as soon as it happened. Trundle was already down in the bot lane or Ari was already down in the bot lane and uh, they were getting picked off. And it seemed like every time you picked up an advantage, it was just immediately taken away. So Definitely something to think about going into the next game. Obviously, um, this game, you have to look back and say, okay, how do we improve? GVU, excellent game all around. Like I said, every time St. Clair did something, there was an answer from GVU, so they played that really well. Um, and uh, NAR absorbed the pressure pretty well on top lane, but their bot lane, that Nautilus, looked unstoppable, hitting hooks left and right, hitting really, really good uh, knockups when he needed to. And, you know, there, there's just not much to say. I think the bot lane did pretty well, and overall... Trundle did a really good job. So, uh, yeah, thank you all for joining us. Just want to give a shout out to our sponsors here. Uh, Crunchyroll, like we said before, really good sponsor. Love having these guys on board. It, it's incredible that uh, we got them. And uh, you had a 14 day premium trial for free if you go to crunchyroll.com slash saints. Definitely take advantage of that. Um, who doesn't love good anime, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. So, shout out to those guys. Uh, thank you, St. Clair, uh, St. Clair Alumni Association, the SRC Subway. And Tim Hortons, these guys have been on this for a long time. I want to thank you again for sponsoring us and for letting us do what we do. John Billabang Zudima. Ashton Ash Nutter. And uh, it's been a great cast. Thank you all for joining us. We'll be here uh, all week, all month, all semester. So keep catching up with us. We'll have lots of different games for you guys. That's going to be it for tonight. Thank you for watching some exciting St. Clair League of Legends. And uh, peace out. Have a good night.